First at four, chilling video shows a man walk into a local police station and try to shoot an officer. The decision just made in this case. Democrats make a major move on gun control this afternoon in the wake of the shooting at Michigan State University. Good afternoon, Brandon. Karen, we are quiet for now, but not for long. We are tracking wet weather just off to our west, tracking our way. The person behind this mask is probably not who you might expect. It's a 17-year-old young woman who is sparking a new path to the trade. Wait till you see how young women are being brought into the trade to fill these important jobs. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. First at four, a Dearborn police officer will not be charged for shooting and killing a man inside of a police station. Newly released video showing the moment a man walked in with a gun and tried to shoot officers. And we do want to warn you, the video is disturbing. Prosecutors say Ali Jaji pulled out a gun within seconds of walking into the Dearborn police station back in December. Now that video shows him pointed at an officer, pulled the trigger, but the gun did not fire. Police say the officer was behind a bulletproof window, ran to get his gun, and then fired back, killing Naji. Prosecutors say Naji may have been in the middle of a mental health episode, but a motive is unknown. Prosecutors say the officer acted in self-defense and no charges will be issued. Democratic state lawmakers take a really big step in passing gun control bills in the wake of the Michigan State shooting. The Senate just passed an 11 bill package along party lines. It includes red flag laws, requirements for safe storage, and universal background checks. Republicans opposed red flag laws, saying they would not have stopped the Michigan State shooter. The Democratic led House may take up the legislation as early as next week. Governor Whitmer has said she'll sign it. Happening right now, Governor Whitmer is signing a bill that expands the state's civil rights laws to include members of the LGBTQ community. The Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act will now prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression. Our Grant Herms will have much more on this landmark moment for the LGBTQ community when you join us tonight at 6. So if your plans take you down a busy stretch of I-94 tonight, you definitely need to find another way to get there. Both sides of I-94 are closing for emergency repairs. This impacts I-94 at Liberty Road in Ann Arbor. The eastbound lanes closed at 4 and the westbound lanes will shut down at 7. Crews are making repairs to the Liberty Road Bridge. After that semi hit the overpass and did some serious damage on Monday. Ramps in the area are also closed for the night. Everything should reopen by tomorrow morning at 6. Oh, it's feeling a bit like spring out there today. Forewarned meteorologist Brandon Rue is in for Kim to track this Thursday warm up. Hey, Brandon. Karen, we are at least dry for now. Garden City down to Gross Eel. No problems, but as we look at exact track 4D radar, here comes the rain. We are looking at some showers now into the Jackson County area, so Anybody heading out I-94, uh, heading west will run into that rain a little quicker as you do, but that wet weather is coming our way over the next couple of hours. Look at these wonderful mid-March temperatures. We're in the middle 50s, a little bit of a south wind kicking up, so it may not feel quite that warm, but it's a mild source coming out of the southwest with that breeze and that's where our wet weather is coming from as well especially after 5 5 30 expect rain through the evening getting heavy at times later tonight and Karen into St. Patrick's Day as well coming up all right thank you Brandon well, things are growing increasingly tense between the U.S. and Russia after a Russian fighter jet downed a U.S. drone over the Black Sea. New video shows the dramatic encounter over international waters. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom to walk us through that video and talk more about help headed for Ukraine. Kim? Yeah, Karen, good afternoon. Three U.S. officials tell NBC News the highest levels of the Russian government approve the actions over the Black Sea. But at this point, we don't know if Russian President Vladimir Putin knew about it. So let's Let's take a look at the video just declassified by the U.S. military. The U.S. says the Russian fighter jet poured fuel onto the unmanned drone over the Black Sea earlier this week. 
The jet then returned to drop even more fuel and ended up colliding with the drone. The propeller was damaged, forcing the military to bring down the drone. The U.S. says it made an effort to wipe the drone of all its sensitive data. Officials say Russia was likely trying to throw the drone off course, but they don't believe that collision was intentional. Now, this comes as Ukraine gets a big boost to help fight Russia in the war. Poland plans to give Ukraine a dozen fighter jets, making it the first NATO member to do so. Ukraine's government has been urgently asking for warplanes. A top national security official says Poland's decision will not prompt the U.S. to send jets. The U.S. has already agreed to send Ukraine tanks. So Karen will have reaction to all of this new information coming from Washington in a live report when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thanks, Kim. Well, we are continuing to keep our eye on the stock market and your money after this week of uncertainty with banks. Stocks were back in positive territory today after yesterday's drop. The Dow just closed and ended up, look at that, 371 points. Now that comes as the Treasury Secretary tries to reassure Americans the nation's banking system is sound. Janet Yellen testified in front of the Senate Finance Committee this morning, one week after the second largest bank collapse in U.S. history. This week's actions demonstrate our resolute commitment to ensure that our financial system remains strong and that depositors' savings remain safe. The Justice Department and the SEC have both launched investigations into the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Well, in an auto state like Michigan, there's always a big need for workers in the trades. Historically, women have been left behind in what was typically considered male jobs. But one local school district is working to close that gender gap. So we're going to bring in Paul Tutman. She is live in Sterling Heights for us this afternoon, where a district has really seen some real and pretty cool results, Paula. Yeah, I think so, because the focus for so many decades has been college, college, college. Not the case anymore. I wanted to bring you down this corridor because it looks so rugged. But what's really cool about this is really who's behind these masks. The man behind the welding mask is not a man at all, but 17-year-old Christina, a student in the Utica School District who's already working, learning a trade, and in the feeder pipeline for companies desperate for workers. I think trades are a lot better than like going to college, but that's just for me. I don't want to spend like four years in college. I really like just doing it right out of high school. It's pressure. It's hard not to catch Khadija's excitement for her traditionally male work. It's pretty exciting. I never expected from four years back then, I never expected myself to be able to do such an amazing thing. But historically, when a student didn't choose college, they left high school in droves for lower level, low paying jobs. By teaching trades that traditionally appeal to men, it meant high school, non-college bound males had a place to go, but not many women. They were forced into unskilled, low level jobs and pay. But with the trades academies like the two in the Utica School District, the Utica Center for Science and Industry, and Stevenson Made, Stevenson Center for Manufacturing, Automation, and Design Engineering, where they are proactively recruiting women, it means outside of the high school walls, women can find and reach parity with their male counterparts. We have over 30 business partners locally that are desperate to hire our kids. Um, they're in here teaching our classes, they're working on student projects um, because they need to hire. At CSI, for instance, which opened in 2008, they initially had one female student enrolled. Now there are 134, or roughly 40% of the total enrollment. I thought going to that company, I was going to be seen as an, a kid, but I was actually talked to as an adult, and all my ideas were taken. At the end of the day, whether students are jumpstarting their college and professional careers with these kinds of focused academies, or jumping directly into the working world, more women in our state will have the ability to be on pay levels on par with men, because they are being courted and understand they can be at the high school level. When we started this GM project, there were guys that were like saying, oh, your group is gonna be carrying you because it's two other guys. And I said, I'm gonna be putting in my work. I'm gonna be doing the same as what you guys are gonna be doing. Yeah, exactly what she said. By the way, what Khadija was holding with that vacuum cleaner, she wasn't vacuuming. She was actually designing improvements to that industrial vacuum cleaner. That's what they're teaching here. They've got another academy opening next year, Karen.
Impressive program and love how that piece ended with Lexi. Some strong words there. Thanks, Paula.